Hello, I'm Thomas, and this is day 17 of 100 Days of Coding IoT Challenge. Today, I'm going to continue working with seven segment eight digit displays. I actually got two of them. I'm going to connect them together. And also, I'm going to use DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor to read some data, display the values on the screens. Um, yeah, this is really a continuation of yesterday's video. And if you haven't watched day 16, I strongly recommend to do so, so you can find out about all the basics, like what the model I'm using, what is the required voltage, what's the best library to use to display values with ESP8266. The link to the video is in the description. But yeah, now let's move to today's challenge. So, uh, I'm, so I'm gonna switch to the breadboard view and connect DHT11. So yeah, let me just quickly disconnect that I'm not gonna use the USB, but just the standard power supply, which is this one. So I'm gonna connect it back, restart just to make sure this screen is working. Okay, right. Okay, so now I'm gonna connect this temperature sensor, maybe here. I've already used this one. Uh, it is on one of the previous videos, and uh, if you haven't seen these videos, I really recommend that. Um, link is, is in the description. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do with this one, it is gonna be quick and simple. So, again, we need to locate plus and minus first. The plus is this one, is on the left. I'm not sure how visible it is. Maybe I'm gonna, I need to show it like that, right? So there is plus, it's on the left here, right? And that is gonna go to 3v3 on the board. That needs to be powered with three volts. Then a minus, right? Which is there. And so there is one, uh, there is one hole, one, one in between those wires, and it's gonna go to the ground, which can be essentially, yeah, it can be this ground here. So here, ground here. Okay, and the last step is to connect another wire. In this case is the red one in the middle. So that is the digital, the digital one. It is, uh, it is described as out. And that is gonna go to D1 on the board. Okay. So again, we have the white one that is plus to 3v3, blue one, that is minus to the ground, and the red one, which is out to D1, right? So te temperature sensor is connected. Uh, let me just quickly restart. Okay, yeah, that, that still works. Okay, so that is restarted. And now let's move to, to the code. And I'm going to do some extra stuff with it. So we're going to start from from pulling the, the core library that I created in the previous video, because that might come useful, especially the timer class. So what I'm gonna do first is to open git ignore and add the lib directory to the git ignore. Okay, so now once this is ignored, I'm, I'm just gonna change directory to lib and then I'm going to clone the core library. I pushed it to my GitHub and it's publicly accessible. So if you want, you can just uh, clone this one as well. And I'm cloning it to into the core directory. Okay, so that's done. We got our core library here now. Cool. So now I can I can essentially use all of those 
classes inside. However, what we need as well is the temperature sensor library, but that's going to be on the platform IO. So I'm opening the platform IO home libraries, and then I'm going to type in DHT11 again, and I am interested in in this one, right? DHT sensor library for ESPX, right? That's the ESPX. So I'm going to add it to the project to the seven segment display and add it there. Okay, so that's done. Now we've got everything required. Um, oh yeah, one more thing. I'm just gonna quickly open it again because I'm really, I'm not gonna type everything from scratch again. So I will just copy everything from the, from the example file. And uh, the thing that we need is essentially the setup and yeah, this stuff here, uh, which is actually easy. So, so the, the include that that was DHT, I think DH DH DH. TESP dot H. So that's the header file I need to require. That's going to go to setup. I will modify this slightly though. And that is essentially working on loop. But in our case, it is not really going to run on loop. So I'm just going to put it somewhere here. Okay. And yeah, essentially this is DHT11 now, and the pin that we use is D1. You know, to improve the code readability, I can define another constant and just, you know, temp, temp sensor pin. Just name it uh, temp sensor pin, and let's just pass it here as a constant. So that comment is also not relevant anymore. So we've got that, we need to create an instance of it. So there is DHT, DHT ESP is DHT. And uh, this bit essentially is gonna go to a timer. I'm gonna start using timer. So we have everything non-blocking uh, that also need include, that also needs include. So timer is timer and then in the loop we're just going to run timer tick. And here it is going to be timer.set interval. So the plan is to run this in intervals. Those intervals, I was thinking we could make them every five seconds. So every five seconds, we should get a temp temperature update, but there is a timeout inside that I need to do because we've got the sampling period as well. So here I'm going to have the timeout with DHT get minimum sampling period. So that's going to happen after the sampling period. Right. And we will read those two values, which is the humidity and temperature. Okay, so after reading those, what I would like to do is to display these values on the screen. So, so you know what, I'm actually thinking about moving this into a function. Let's call it display. And what we're gonna specify is unsigned int segment. We want to keep that because I'm gonna start using more segments. 
not just not just z not just the the first one which is zero then we will have the const char and value okay and what we as we can do is to have um the boolean for the for the for the decimal point so i can pass that here we can make it false as a default though so that would be false and yeah the value is something that we're gonna need to read oh, okay yeah I'm, I'm just i just see the the, the the decimal point is not really gonna work in the same way right we're gonna have to accept the values like that essentially right because we also accepting letters right so even if someone if someone decides to put a decimal decimal pointer somewhere else that needs to be covered inside the value and we need to detect that okay to, to not spend too much time on it i have prepared the the function myself in the meantime so uh, let me just copy paste the whole display thing and I'm just gonna go through it because you know I, I would like to I would like to show you multiple displays and I don't want to I don't want the video to be too long so that's gonna be the display function I created we got a value as the first as the first one the first argument and segment as a second one what happens here is we clear the, that segment, right? So this supports multiple segments. Then um, it checks for the dots number, right? Because like, like I've just showed you, you can have essentially something like that, right? So in that case, I need to count the number of dots because the dot is put next to the the digit or or the letter right on the on the seven segment screen so i'm counting this here and then depending on the numbers of of length i'm allowing either eight which is the the the, the number of of positions right the number of of digits of, of the letters right on the display the maximum one but if it's with the dots it's gonna be more right because there is a dot with every single with every single letter on the screen you can put the dot so that makes 16 sort of right uh, letters instead of instead of 8 so essentially you can have 8 letters plus 8 dots but only dots if it's something else i'm not allowing this that's why counting all those dots here so to to support this kind of situation where you can where you want to for example display an IP address, right? I'm not sure if that would be um, a sufficient number of of positions of of digits to do that. But yeah, maybe anyway. Um, continue. Let, let's continue. So so here in this while loop, I'm handling the situation with the dots, right? So I have the the key. So that's sort of like starting from like like with our one two three four five six seven right so the key which is going to be the essentially the the value that we that we put is going to it's going to start like from the from the last one right and then go go to zero and on the other hand position is starting from zero and ends on the length minus one right but what i do here is i've got this flag for the with dot and if that flag if if i mean if the value at the, the 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 actual position in the loop is the dot i'm setting the flag to true incrementing the dot shift which is required to like you know keep track of the number of dots already on the screen and essentially i'm just going um i'm just in incrementing i and that that starts again but this time here uh sorry with dot is passed to set char so the dot is going to be displayed and then if the if the with dot was true it changes it to false yeah this delay is not required here 
Okay, so yeah, this is essentially the function to display something on the screen. And here I would like to display humidity and temperature. So let's think about the goal. What we want to display and what those values could be. So I'm thinking about displaying the temperature first, right? That's gonna be on the left. So if you if you look at the at the display, it is so, sort of like split in half, right? You got a separator in the middle. So I'm thinking about displaying the temperature on the left and the humidity on the right. For the temperature, um, we got Celsius degrees. So essentially, that is not that is never gonna be three digits, right? It's gonna be up to two digits. So we could actually use a decimal point and have another two digits after decimal point, right? So an example temperature would be uh, something like this, right? That's 20.55 uh, Celsius degrees. So that's gonna be the four, four digits on the screen. And then we'll have a space and the humidity, it is provided uh, as a percentage. And for the humidity, we don't really have to be that exact. So we will keep a one position after the decimal point. So I'm thinking about something like, uh, let me just give you an example, something like that, right? And that takes exactly eight spaces on the screen, right? Eight digits on the screen. So in order to display that, I can make use of sprintf function in C. And in order to do that, I'm gonna have to declare a char array. I'm gonna call it value, and it's gonna be eight length. And then sprint f, and for the sprint f, basically value is the is the uh, variable we're writing to. Then the template, and that is going to be for the first one. We will have zero two percent zero two. That means this is uh, two digits. If it's a single digit, it's gonna add the zero at the beginning. So like for temperatures like five, six degrees, we will have zero, six degrees. And then we'll have decimal point and two positions after decimal point. This is also gonna be filled with zeros if, if, if it's essentially, if there is nothing, uh, is that if there is nothing else, if the precision is just one point. Uh, after the decimal point. But anyway, uh, and then a space and we will have zero to zero. Uh, actually, we can do one F, right? We, we want to do one F, yeah, because 40.1. Okay, and then I need to provide first the temperature and then humidity. Okay. I also changed this, that was five seconds. Uh, I changed it to two seconds, so it's going to be a little bit faster. I'm going to print this out. I mean the value. Make sure on the serial monitor I haven't done any mistake. And then display value and the segment is going to be the default one, which is zero. Okay, so that's it. Let me deploy the code and let's have a look at the screen. Okay, that's deployed. And yes, you see, we've got 24. Oh, okay, that changed because it changed every two seconds. So we have 24 degrees and 51% humidity. That's the, 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 these are the, the conditions in my room. Okay, that's quite warm actually, 24 degrees. I need to turn off the heating. Okay. Um, another another cool thing we could do um, with the with the display itself would be to display time, right? We could synchronize with the time server and display the time here or date as an example. But you know what? I mentioned connecting multiple screens, so I'm going to connect another screen here. I'm going to show you how to do it. And on this screen, we're going to keep the temperature and humidity. But on the other screen, 
I'm going to display a time. Okay, first of all, let me switch this off and for now remove the module and I'm going to disconnect the USB. Okay, so what we're gonna focus on first, uh, let me just quickly yeah, lighten everything up. What we want to focus on first is this display module and the right hand side. Here we've got the output pins. Um, so if you turn this around on the other side, you can find the markings here, right? So we've got VCC, Grant, D out, LODA, and CLK. And those pins reflecting, sort of reflecting, it's not exact, right? Because here we have D in, this is D out, right? Reflecting those pins. And essentially to connect another another seven segment display, we just need to connect all of those pins to to pins with the with the similar markings. Essentially same as on this one, right? So VCC is gonna go to VCC, ground to ground, data in, uh, on this side it is called data out. So data out to data in on, the, on another one. And then there is a load I think that goes to CS and clock to clock. Let me make sure, yeah, there's clock on, uh, on, the, other, on the other side. So, so yeah, um, yeah. One issue I had uh, when I when I tried to do it myself when I was preparing for the video is the VCC. Apparently, this seven segment display module drops down the voltage by half. So, and there is no issue if you want to display just uh, let's say four numbers here or for letters, for numbers here, or for letters. But if you want to display all of all of eight here and here, one of them is gonna be flickering and is not really gonna be very clear. So what, ne what is needed to be done, ideally, is to supply power separately. Just the VCC though. So what I'm gonna do, for connecting this two is to connect VCC straight to the plus rail here, right? The five volt rail here, and the rest is just gonna go. Uh, the, the rest is just gonna be connected to those pins. So I will leave VCC on this side and VCC on this side. Uh, sorry, uh, so I leave VCC on this side unconnected and this one connected to the rail. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start from. Let me just yeah put them like next to each other so it is it is it is visible. And I'm going to start from the ground a gray wire connecting to the ground here, and then to the ground here. Okay, first one's done. Then the blue wire that is going to be for the D out. And then D in on this one. Then we have the black wire. Is it the black one? Yeah, that is black one. And that is going to LODA, I think, on this side. It is called LODA. On this side, it is called CS. And the last one, quickly, black purple, is going to clock. And from the clock, to the clock here. Okay. And the last step is gonna be this wire. It is a bit different, right? Because it's on one side it's uh, it's 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 female and male on the other side. So connecting this wire to VCC and that is gonna go straight to the plus here. Okay, 
Okay, so now we've got two of them connected. Okay, and now I'm moving to the code. Okay, here I need to start from a little refactoring because at the moment our set clock function is a private and it's part of single host HTTPS client. So ideally I would like to have a separate class that does the clock, clock synchronization or a separate function. But to not, to not to make a video too long, I'm going to just copy the set clock function from here because I'm pretty sure this is this is mostly self-contained. It used it it uses timer, and this is the only dependency. Yeah, so I'm just gonna copy paste it into a main.cpp. Yeah, for those who don't know about setting the clock in a non-blocking way, I recommend watching the last video. Yeah, the big refactoring one. It, it is three hours video, but it's split into sections. So you can find the section at, uh, where, where, when I talk about timer and I'm making this non-blocking callback based. Link is in the description. Right, so for this one, yeah, the timer is there. I changed the the operator, um, the, the the operator from the arrow one to the dot, and that should essentially do its work. So that is going to synchronize the clock. So when we start, when we start, let me just first of all specify another interval, and that interval is going to display the time itself. So this is gonna be very similar to what happens here because that essentially displays the time based on now. At the beginning, where the e when the ESP starts, the time starts counting from zero, but once it's synchronized, that takes some time, it changes to the actual time, right? The time on the time server, which is gonna be the actual time. However, what we need to use is this time info struct and gm time to get the to get the hours, minutes, and seconds because this is gonna be the first step. So here, what I'm gonna do is to just uh, yeah I still need I also need now, so that's gonna be the first line here. So I'm getting a now from time. This is the time function returns, uh, returns time in a format of, let's just say, I think it's long int or something like this. This is a Unix timestamp. And then this formats it into time info, which is a struct where we probably we could do something about it, I think. Uh, it's not really well visible here, but yeah, we, we can get TM seconds, minutes, hours, and so on. So that's what I'm gonna display here. But again, I'm gonna need a char value, ri, length eight, and sprintf. Sprintf, again, we're writing to the value, but this time the format is going to be based on int. So we will have zero to d, then that's gonna be a dot. Uh, actually, we can have a space dot, zero to d again, space dot, and zero to d again. And from the time info, we should be able to extract. Is there anything I'm missing about time info? Maybe I need the ASCII time instead. No, I don't think so. They just print it out. 
So yeah, I need to look into it because it doesn't really help me. My ID it doesn't really help me with time info. So I'm going to open this and yeah, that is TM hour. We need TM hour. TM hour. Then there's going to be time info dot TM min and time info TM sec. Let me just quickly confirm. Yeah, that's second min. That's for minutes. So we will have hours, minutes, and seconds, always with zero. So that's gonna look like a clock. Okay, and uh, I'm just going to print this out as well, so I can see in the serial monitor. And then I'm just gonna call display. But this time, apart from value, I'm going to provide one which is going to be for the segment number one, which is se segment two, right? The first one is number zero. Okay, let me check if it compiles, because if my IDE doesn't hint, usually there is something wrong with the code. No, there is nothing wrong with the code. Probably there is nothing wrong with the code. We cannot really tell that. Okay, but this one is just going to start from zero, and it's just going to continue counting. We still need to synchronize the time, and that's why I've got this function set clock in here and for that function what we could do you know what let's make it more smart so I will do set clock that takes a function on clock set we can have a timeout set for longer I, I'm gonna change it for 30 seconds let's say so 30 seconds we're gonna give it more time and this is this is being called when when the time is synchronized however yeah that takes a boolean success I can call it right so if there is a success we basically go into uh, if we have success I'm going to print it out maybe if we don't have success I'm gonna print out could not synchro synchronize the time. And if we get that, I guess what we could do is to try to do it again. So it's going to continue. But in order to do that, I'm going to put it into, I'm going to have to put it in a separate function. So let's call it sync time. And that is gonna happen. That is gonna happen essentially. And after that, we just do sync time again, right? So recursively until it's synchronized. And when it's synchronized, when it's synchronized, when it's everything, everything is, is cool, we want to start this interval. So that is only going to start when the time is synchronized at the beginning. At the beginning. Let me check if this is possible. Yeah, that is. So at the beginning, what I could do is to make use of a display on the first segment, right? We use the, 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 the on the second segment. Sorry, that's on the second segment. So on the second segment, I could display a value let's say I wonder if I display one two three four five six seven eight you know just the uh, uh, hyphens bunch of hyphens if this is gonna be displayed yeah this is important so that's that's how it starts the sync time displays that and then when it's it's actually uh, synchronized, right? We got the time synchronized. I can even uh, print this out. So more visibility on the serial monitor. Time synchronized. Then we set the interval for one second. So we, we should actually see the, the seconds flowing, like the seconds changing. And we display the, the value every second. So that's what happens, right? And we give the whole thing 
um, 30 seconds, right? So if there is a timeout, it is just going to still call this callback with, with the success fault. Okay, and here I'm just gonna call it sync time. Let's, let's just call this function, right? That again, quickly explaining this, displaying just a bunch of hypens, then it starts synchronizing the clock. And that clocks, that clock, uh, the timeout for this is 30 seconds. If it doesn't manage to synchronize in 30 seconds, then it's going to print out could not synchronize the time and tries again. Otherwise, it prints out time synchronized and set interval for one second. So this function is going to run every second and it's going to update our display with the actual time, right? So we never see the, the, the inaccurate time. We never see the zero, the zeros, right? We, we, we should see either those dashes, those hyphens, or the actual time. Cool. Okay, let me try to compile this first. Yeah, that works. So I'm going to deploy. Ah, here, yeah, before you deploy, don't forget to change the number of segments to two. Right, this is important. And now I can deploy. Okay, so let's test it. I have already deployed the code, but disconnected USB. So I'm going to uh, switch on the, the power supply now. And let me connect the USB. So we should see something on the screen in a few seconds. Okay, we see those high pens and we can see the temperature. Now it's synchronizing. Let me check the serial monitor. Yeah, we're getting the readings from the temperature in the serial monitor. And now I'm waiting for the time to be synchronized. It, it may take up to 30 seconds, so I might need to speed this video up. Okay, cool. So we can see the actual time. It is a bit late, right? It's 10 p.m. So I'm going to have to finish soon. But as you can see, this is working. We can see it, it, it is dimmed a little bit. I'm not sure how good is this visible on the camera. But whenever the value changes, the intensity of the light changes a little bit. So I'm not sure really how to get rid of it. It might be due to the, the fact that, um, yeah, that happens every, every two seconds. So I assume because the temperature also changes every two seconds, we, we write to those displays at the same time and that may cause the, the, the change in light, in lightning. When I connected this circuit before, when I was preparing for the video, I had some issues with the screen. Sometimes the value on one of the screens is not really displayed well. And this is due to the changes in voltage or current, right? It is, it is due to the uh, wires being a bit long, right? So we have some space between, oh, you see, you see right now, you can actually, you could actually see this right now with the uh, humidity, right? The five wasn't really right. And this is this is because we got some interference in inside the circuit. What we could do to prevent it is the use of, of the capacitor. It's like it's called, I think it's called short circuit uh, or short circuited, something like this, capacitor that you can basically put between the plus and minus on the power rail. That is going to stabilize a little bit. However, it may not be sufficient. I've got another one, right? Remember from the beginning. I've got another one. And those small ones that I'm going to put right before. Let me just connect it. And the small one I'm just going to put right, right before those two. But this is still not enough because those wire, wires are a little bit long and it's not really going to st stabilize it well. Um, with this configuration, I've managed to limit 
the the error rates um, significantly essentially it happens still it happens sometimes but it's very rare that the value is displayed incorrectly so yeah that, that, that is essentially something I found on the internet to to stabilize the the current or, or voltage drops it might be not enough you may need to solder something closer to this circuit for example right to the to the to the controller of the of the seven segment display and this one as well um, and also uh, shorten the those those uh, wires from the board to um, to this one right or maybe you know how to stabilize the the current and voltage even further and like completely get rid of this issue of uh, having these values uh, displayed incorrectly sometimes and if so please let me know in the comments i would really appreciate that okay this is it for today thanks for watching from tomorrow i'm gonna start a new subject which is going to be esp8266 file system so i'm gonna put the hardware aside for this couple of videos to come back to the foundations which is going to be writing to files reading from files on ESP8266, downloading the files from the internet, uploading the files from the from your computer to, to the board. And um, after that, I'm gonna do uh, a video about the certificate store. So how to make HTTP requests to any location on the internet that is secure, that, is has, that has verified certificate. And I'm gonna show you how to pass JSON on ESP as well. So, yeah, stay with me. If you don't want to miss the videos, hit the subscribe button. Really recommend that. So you will get notified as soon as I upload a new video, which happens daily, but different times. Okay, that's it. Cheers and bye.